In this episode, I'm gonna take a modern British classic, humble fish, chips and curry sauce, and I'm gonna elevate it to a fine dining dish for you to follow along at home with. The recipe is super simple, really, really rewarding to finish this dish. I can't wait for you to try it. So let's get going. So the first part of this recipe requires to put some salt on the fish. Now that might seem really odd, but what we're trying to do is draw out any excess moisture before we cook. So you wanna get a good quality sea salt and then just dive straight in. So be quite liberal over the top of your fish. And it does seem odd, but we will wash it off with some cold water. And it also adds another sort of layer of seasoning. You can do this in a salted brine solution, but I just find this way is a lot easier. So what we'll do is pop that to one side and we'll crack on with the curry sauce. So I've got some lovely ingredients for this curry sauce. So what we're trying to recreate is sort of a chip shop style curry sauce. It's really simple to make and it packs loads of flavour. So I'm going to start off with some diced onions, a diced Granny Smith apple, that gives a lovely little bit of sharpness, some raisins for a bit of sweetness and earthiness, classic curry powder, mild. You can use a spicy one if you want, but I've gone for the mild one. And then just a little knob of ginger. So a splash of oil in the pan. And then we go straight in with the onions and apples. Get a nice caramelization on them. So while that's cooking away, I'm gonna show you a little chefy trick of peeling ginger. So get a spoon, a teaspoon, and your ginger, and if you just rub it, all that skin comes off and you don't get any waste. Normally you'll use a, a peeler or a small paring knife and you end up losing half of the ginger there. We're just getting rid of what we're not gonna use. Really cool little trick. And then we just wanna use a little bit of ginger. Chop it nice and thin. And that'll bring a little bit of spiciness as well. So that goes straight into the pan with the apples and the onions. We keep that on a nice high heat to start with. And then when we start getting some color on those, we'll drop the heat down and start adding the other ingredients. So the onions and ginger and apples are getting nicely caramelized, getting a lovely color on that. So we're gonna add the raisins and just give the pan a little shake. And I've got some coriander here. And you don't have to put this in because I know people can be quite funny about coriander, but I just think it gives a dish a beautiful freshness. Uh, it's one of my favorite herbs. So just give that a nice little chop. It doesn't matter if it's fine or rough because we're gonna chuck it all into a blender at the end anyway. Just get a lot more flavor out of it. So that goes in as well. Give your pan another shake and it's starting to smell amazing now it's starting to sort of get there we'll get into that flavor that smell of what you would associate with a good curry sauce then mild curry powder that goes straight in and then we sort of want to swirl that around with a spoon gently and we want to cook it out it's a dry powder so we just want to cook that dryness away and make sure all the ingredients in the pan are nicely coated if it starts to feel like it's getting a bit stick or sticking to the bottom, just remove the pan from the heat and that'll immediately stop that intense sort of burny smell, burny flavour. Now, that's where I want to be with that. So if we just get some water and you just want to pour water just to cover the ingredients. Just to cover. We can always add, but we can never take away. So if we need more water later on, we can do that. And then just give that pan a good deglaze. So get your spoon right in there, at the bottom of the pan, making sure you're getting all that lovely flavor, all that caramelized flavor off the bottom of the pan. And then we just allow that to come gently up to the boil and then we'll drop it to a simmer for about 15 minutes. Mm -hmm. 
While that curry sauce is simmering, I'm going to get on with the chip element to this dish. So I've got some potatoes. I'm just going to quickly peel them. I like to use a Russen's potato or a Maris Piper is also good. Uh, they're really, they stand up to high temperatures really well because they're high in starch. Um, you don't want to be sort of using a, a, a red skin potato or a baking potato. They've got too much moisture. Um, so that's all that, nice and peeled. I'll get rid of that. Da -da. <clears throat> so we could use a knife. I'm gonna use my trusty mandolin and try not to take my fingers off. So you want to slice these potatoes nice and thin so we can then cut them into thin strips. So then we get nice thin potatoes. So now what we're gonna do is we're gonna use our knife and lay them out. So what some people tend to do is just pile them all up like this and try and cut them, but you're not gonna get a nice even cut all the way through. It'll splay off at the end. So what I like to do is just sort of lay it out across your board and start nice and slow. So that's the thing about using a knife, you don't have to go super fast. That's something that chefs do as a necessity. It's a fast paced environment. You don't have to go wild, speed kills. So you don't wanna go crazy and cut the end of your fingers off. So we'll just repeat this process until we've got enough. And then I've just got a little ball down here. I just pop them into a little ball to one side. And we go again. If there's a few rogue ones in there, you can always pick them out. That's absolutely fine. So that's nice. And then I'm just gonna add a little bit of salt before that goes into the fryer. So I'm just gonna get everything ready before we fry our potatoes. So I've got a bowl and you can use kitchen roll or a blue cloth just to absorb any excess fat when the potatoes come out. It's always good to have this ready before you're actually going to the fryer with the potatoes so you're not running about. If you don't have a fryer, you can use a heavy bottom pan with vegetable oil, but just make sure you've got a thermometer. You don't want it to go above 180 degrees. One, because you'll burn your potatoes, and two, because you don't want to burn your house down. So, potatoes in. Then I use a, a, a holy spoon or a, a spider just to keep them moving. You don't want them sticking, sticking together and clumping together. So we want to take these potatoes until they're sort of golden brown. There's no really defined time on how, that, how long that should take. But if we work on sort of one minute, 90 seconds, as long as they come golden brown, and you get a lovely sort of chip-esque colour to them, you're onto an absolute winner. And you'll feel them start to firm up as well as you're moving them about. Potatoes, lovely and crispy. That's the sort of golden colour that you're looking for. And then a little bit of salt, and we'll season them just before we serve with a little bit of vinegar, so you're getting the salt and vinegar curry sauce, fish chips vibe. So we'll just set them to one side, and then I think we're about ready to blitz our sauce. So, sauce is done. I'm just gonna give that a little taste, just to see where we're at with seasoning. And for me, that needs a little bit more salt. So I'm just gonna add a pinch of salt, and then once we've blitzed, we can get right in, because the apple and the onion and the raisins will all be pureed in, so we'll get different elements of flavor, and we can adjust the seasoning at the end. So that goes straight in. Onto a high blend setting. 
And we want to blend until we've got a beautiful smooth finish. It should take about three or four minutes. That's going to need another three or four minutes blending. So while that's kicking on, I'm going to wash the cod and then we can get straight to the bones of this dish. Perfect. The sauce is about there. So now we are going to cook the fish. So I've washed all the salt off the fish in cold water and you can see that it's, it's firmed up, which means it's going to cook really well and it's not going to leak a lot of moisture. So I've got a hot frying pan on high heat Splash oil in the pan. Be quite liberal with the oil. And then into the pan. Don't be tempted to shake the pan or move the fish. You want that sort of crust to create on the bottom of the fish before we start moving it about. Otherwise it's just going to tear and it'll be no good. I'm just swizzing the oil around the pan just so it coats the bottom of that fish evenly and we get a lovely golden colour. So now there's a crust created on the bottom of that fish, which allows the fish to move about. You can see it's moving about in the pan and that's how I know that it's ready to go in the oven. So you'll notice that I've not turned the fish over. What I want is a beautiful finish on one side. So we, when we cook fish, we cook it presentation side down. So we get a lovely caramelization, then we turn it over. We've got that presentation side that's all golden and delicious. So I'm going to bang that into an oven at 180 degrees for four minutes. I'm going to chuck a load of cold butter in there and make it all beautiful. Four minutes have flown by. The cod looks done to me. You can see four minutes is a really good amount of time to cook a small piece of fish. What you don't want is the fish to totally bunch up and start pushing protein out of the flakes. That's what you don't want. So let's turn that over and have a little look. Absolutely stunning. And that's what I'm talking about when I say presentation side down, lovely firm fish, beautifully golden, back on the heat, high heat, chunk of cold butter, that goes in and it just adds a little bit of extra indulgence to this dish. So when you're basting fish or meat or anything, you want to get your butter nice and hot and foaming and then just sort of team it over and you're just adding more and more flavour. You're taking flavour out of that pan, you're taking flavour out of the butter. For me, that's done. I'm just gonna pop that to one side and allow that to soak up all that wonderful butter. And now we can get our curry sauce out of the blender and into a pan, and that's perfect. That's what I imagine the colour of a chip shop curry sauce to be. So back onto the heat. You don't want it boiling, you just want to put a little bit of heat through it. Just for a little extra jazzy step, I've got some coriander left over. So I'm just going to run a knife through this coriander so it's nice and finely chopped. And I'm just going to mix that with our fried potatoes with a little bit of salt and a little bit of vinegar to give that sort of added chip shop feel. So. Potatoes, nice and crispy. Coriander through. And this should coat. A little bit more salt. Lovely, lovely. And now I'm just going to taste the curry sauce just to make sure that it's where I need it to be. That's absolutely perfect. You've got sweet, you've got heat. It's going to go beautiful with this fish. So now we just need to assemble the dish. So I've got some lovely plates here. Doesn't matter what you put it in really. If you're showing off, take the time to research, get some nice plates. It's, it's always good, it lifts the dish to the next level. 
So, curry sauce into the bottom of the bowl. Lovely. And we've got our fish. Normally, I would take fish out of a pan and put it onto some kitchen roll or onto a blue cloth, but I want to get all the flavor from this. I don't want anything to escape. And then just a tiny, tiny little flick of vinegar, because you don't want those potatoes to go soggy. You just want that sort of little bit of acidity when you're getting stuck in. So, fish into the center. And then we go on with our chips. Now be delicate with this, because you do still want it to look lovely. I mean, essentially it is fish and chips and curry sauce, but we want to elevate it, right? Perfect, and just tidy it up. You don't want anything on the rim of the plate. And there you go. Fish and chips taken to the next level. One of my favorite dishes. I hope you've enjoyed cooking this and I hope you enjoy getting stuck in. 